My name is Jenny Nichols. I'm a member of the Board of Directors, and I'm here to bring you your announcements for today and this week. So first of all, we would like, the church would like to thank everybody who participated in the Pride events of last weekend. On Saturday afternoon, we had a wonderful worship service in Potluck with fabulous, plenty, with fabulous Plenty of Spirit and rainbow-themed food that was shared by all. Those green cupcakes were amazing. Then last Sunday, we were able to hand out over 1,000 Founders MCC bracelets that say, God thinks you're fabulous, and information cards on the parade route. We participated in the Interfaith Pride Service before the parade started, and a big thanks to Peter Kirkpatrick, to Patrice Ford, and for all who attended and helped lead that service. <laughs> then last night, here at Founders in our, in our theater downstairs, we hosted the Reverend Sheena Metal of LA Talk Radio for our first Saturday night spiritual worship event. This was a wonderful event bringing together folks of different faith beliefs and backgrounds to be reminded of the power of love and knowing each other as we, that we are enough, just as we are. Our plan is for Sheena to be, again, be here again in July and maybe further on from that. So if you weren't able to be here on Sunday, or I'm sorry, on last night, don't worry, there's more, more events coming with her. Coming up on Tuesday, June 18th at 6.15 in our upstairs conference room is our monthly board of directors meeting. It's a great way of hearing about all the stuff that's happening behind the scenes of this church, and each and every one of you are welcome to attend. Next Saturday, June 22nd, ICM is going to be hosting their 27th anniversary celebration. <laughs> It will be happening downstairs in the theater. Please come for dinner, followed by live entertainment and dancing, starting at 7 p.m. The suggested donation is $10, but in true Founders MCC fashion, nobody will be turned away for lack of funds. And then next week during worship, we'll be honoring our graduates at our 11 o'clock service. We'll be honoring our mothers of our graduates at 11 o'clock service as well. So, please come and help congratulate them for all of the years of hard work. And also next Sunday, contemporary gospel singer Sean Thomas will be with us in concert, both at the 9 o'clock and the 11 o'clock service. We'll also be taking up a love offering for him during both of those services to help support his ministry. So, last Saturday in his sermon, Reverend Keith mentioned that ABC News had been here at our campus interviewing our own Reverend Troy Perry as a part of their month-long Pride celebration. In a moment, we're going to be showing you the clip that was posted all over Facebook, um, but in case you haven't seen it, please pay attention. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful tribute to that man. And as that is being queued up, we'd also like to congratulate 16-year-old filmmaker Odessa Shalane Goldberg, she is the winner of the Troy Perry Award, which is the top honor at the, Out, at the Our Pride Video Fest competition. Her short film, First They Came, interweave images of mass shootings with Leonard Cohen's song, Hallelujah, and Martin Neumoller's poem, First They Came. If you want to catch this, you can see it on Vimeo or online. So congratulations to Odessa. Thank you for your tribute, and now let's turn our attention to the monitors to watch Reverend Troy. And they said to me, who do you represent? I said, I represent the homosexual community of Los Angeles. Reverend Troy Perry started the first LGBTQ plus ministry in his living room in 1968. I had taken out a man in a gay newspaper, the Here, Reverend Troy is a little four page newspaper, and gave my home address in the New York. And that first Sunday, 12 people showed up. But six Sundays later, they had outgrown Troy's living room and officially founded the Metropolitan Community Church. 
Today, the MCC is the largest LGBTQ plus ministry in the world with over 172 churches in 37 countries. But Troy didn't stop there. He spent the majority of his life fighting for the LGBTQ plus community. Who are credited for being one of the founding members of the first pride parade ever. Yes, New York always takes for me to say we had the first gay pride ever. <laughs> On the first anniversary of Stonewall, Troy had been encouraged to commemorate the riots by having a demonstration in L.A., but he had a different idea. I said, this is Hollywood. I said, we've already held the demonstration. I said, uh, we're going to hold it for a The thing that was amazing to me when I tried to tell there were fouls and people, and I've never seen a word on a chain set, cats full of places in my life. Troy has been recognized all over the world as a leader for the LGBTQ plus civil rights movement. This October, the robes he's worn and the documents he's cherished will be on display for the whole world to see at the Smithsonian Museum. But for now, you can find him on the corner of Prospect and Rodney, preaching to the Los Feliz neighborhood and continuing to fight for his community. What about the moment? We should work well. Would you pray with me this morning? God, thank you for this time that we have to be in this place. And Lord, we send up our hallelujahs because you, you woke us up this morning and started us on our way. And here we have made it all the way here. And thank you, God, because when we come into this place and our spirits join with the spirits of those around us, it's a mighty big testimony. And it's like the day of Pentecost when your spirit blew through the room one more time and let people know you were alive and well. And thank you, God, because we know you are alive and well in this place today. We ask that you will bless in all that we do and say here today, let it bring you glory and honor and uh, let us leave here refreshed and knowing that we have been in the presence of God Almighty. We ask in the name of Jesus our Christ and all that is holy. Amen. Amen. We are delighted to see you all here today. 
Um, I, if it's your first time with us, I'm Reverend Keith Mazingo, and I certainly want to say a big welcome to you. In fact, if you're brand new with us today, for the first time, I'm going to wave at you. Would you just wave at me? I know there's several. See, there's several over there. There's one back there. There's one over here and a couple back there in the back, and well... We're just glad that you are here. If you are here with us for the first time, we hope that you will enjoy the worship service and that if you don't have a church home, know that we are always looking to make you feel right at home and you are here on a wonderful day today. Um, we also want to say welcome to those folks who are joining us online. We always so much appreciate you checking in to let us know that you're here. So many people join us every single week online, and we just want to say thank you for joining us. We're delighted that you're here. And we also want to say we're glad to see all of you who are so faithful to be with us in worship today. And before I give you a moment to um, say welcome to each other, especially to those new folks around you, um, we have a special guest with us today, um, Reverend Dr. Uh, Joyce uh, Turner Keller from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, who will be bringing the message for us soon. Now, some of you will remember Dr. Joyce was here a couple of months ago, and she made such an impression, and remember the Holy Spirit spoke to her and said, I'm coming back in June. And she announced that, and I was like, well, okay, I guess she's coming back in June. Because <laughs> I know when the Spirit speaks. Amen? I also know when it's the real spirit. So don't you get any funny ideas with some of your spirits out there. I'm just saying. Anyway, uh, Dr. Joyce will be bringing the, she's doing a monologue today on, uh, called Ain't I Free Yet to Celebrate Juneteenth. If you're not sure what Juneteenth is, well, check in your bulletins. There's a story there. And she's going to talk a little bit about where slavery came from and are we free yet today. Uh, in our hearts, and so I won't, I, I won't say any more about that because I don't want to take away from anything that she's doing. But she is a dear friend of mine from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. When I was pastoring there, she would come over to Metropolitan Community Church, and she would do these plays. Sometimes she would do like today, and it would be a monologue. Other times she'd come in and have a group with her, and sometimes she'd pull people out of the congregation and say, you're going to be in this play, and here's what you're going to do. And they would just follow her lead, and it was always amazing what would happen. Uh, she's been in documentaries. She is, is a, has been a professor at Southern University in Baton Rouge, and she is a major advocate for uh, the HIV/AIDS community as a heterosexual woman living with HIV and AIDS for many years, and 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 being successful in life. Amen. Amen. And we appreciate her being here today. And you will all get a chance to visit with her after worship. But for now, would you just take a few moments and have a time of passing of the peace or greeting one another and welcoming each other, especially those folks that are new with us. Make sure you get around to them and make them welcome. May be seated. Now, most of you, I think, um, when you came in, you received a flower, you picked up a flower. Don't worry if you did not get an opportunity to do that. You, they will bring the basket up. But if you will notice, we started in the last service and we're doing what we did at Mother's Day. We are, today's also Father's Day. So we are honoring our fathers and we wanted to give you an opportunity to honor your father, whether it's your biological father or a spiritual father or just someone who is a father figure in your life. And if you want to do that, we like, we're, we're letting them be represented by these flowers, their presence in our time of worship. And so I invite you to take a flower. If you didn't get one, the basket's coming up here and you're, you're welcome to take one from the basket. 
And let's just continue to build our vases full of flowers with the presence of our fathers. Yes. Please rise if you're able for the reading of this morning's sacred scripture. This morning's reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 8, verse 32, taken from the New King James Bible. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Hear what the Spirit says today.
Amen. You may be seated. And would you please give a, a warm Los Angeles welcome to Dr. Joyce Turner Kelly. and the glory to God this morning. Amen. And don't nobody in here think I'm going to be behaving because I don't do none of that. <laughs> if I'm going to be myself, I will be misbehaving. Oh. All right. Now, that is according to social opinion. <laughs> However, now I'm going to tell y'all a little something about me and my mom. Here I go, thinking I know it all, you know. I, I'm the smart child, I'm the oldest one in the family, so. My mother was talking about something and I, being cocky, said, well, my dear, the truth set you free. She said, shut up, girl, go back and read your Bible. <laughs> so I went and picked up my Bible, that old Holy Bible, that Old Testament that read, and you shall know the truth, and it shall make you free. Mm -hmm. So, think about it. Make, there's a difference between make and set. Right. You see, you can be set so long in the wrong way. You know what I mean? Like I was saying that, two people got up read, read it wrong. But anyway, because see, sometimes we got to check ourselves to correct yourself. Now, not throwing shade on nobody, but I just wanted to set the record set straight. That in the beginning it was written, the truth shall make you free. Amen. Now when something is made free, honey, you bad then. Cause you see, I can tell y'all the truth. Ain't I free now? Thank God for that. Because <laughs> let me tell you, sometimes I, I kind of get out of bounds, y'all. <laughs> but you know, we talk about freedom. But ask yourself, how free are you? Are you really free? Because y'all know we police from the womb to the tomb. Huh? They telling me, but I can't do it with my body. Right. Oh. But they ain't paying no bills. Oh. I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, so how free am I really? Right. When they tell me that I got to love a black man when a white man might have his eyes on me. You know, I'm just saying. You know, so what color got to do with it? Right. But, 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 you know, and, and you know, I, I, I got to ask you, well, am I really free? Mm -hmm. Am I really free? <clears throat> when the laws of this nation wants to write rules to govern how I live, how I walk, how I talk, what I say, and to whom I can say it. Now, am I really free? You see, I have to look way back to when my foreparents and my grandparents were forced to work in the field. But before then, let's go back to the Native American people. See, let, let's, let, let's go back there to when they shared their knowledge of how to till the soil and ended up getting the land stole from them. I'm just saying, you know, so if we're gonna tell the truth about immigration, we need to put some other folk out. But the problem with that is that I'll be running some of y'all, so I'd rather not do that. If we're gonna talk about immigration, 
And they don't want nobody coming into Mexico, so, I mean, into California anymore, but come on, y'all, let's tell the truth. Weren't there some immigrants here before the border moved? So, how free are we? Now, I'm just putting it out there. And you know, I, I know some of y'all might be a little offended, but you'll be all right after this. You go get lunch and drink a Sprite, you're going to be fine. And if not, oh well, we, we ain't going to worry about you, because we're gonna, we, we trying to get a message out here. We trying to see where does your freedom lie? Where are you free? How are you free? Are you free to communicate with me and tell the truth? I mean, I, let's be for real. Everybody in here ain't gonna wanna hang out with me. Cause you're scared to be seen with me cause you know you might lose your job and I don't blame you. <laughs> but the truth be told is that when my ancestors were brought here, many were brought by force thrown into the belly of a ship. Mothers who wouldn't let their babies go. They told them, say, you know, give them here, I'll take care of them, and they were thrown overboard. You know, so when they talk about absent black fathers, we, <laughs> society was the first to separate black folk from their families. <laughs> so it didn't just start with this administration. <laughs> They've been separating us from us children all the time. No, no, I'm just telling the truth. Yeah. But it's an outrage now. Because now we see people putting babies in cages, families in cages, separating mothers from their children. But look at your prison system. They've been doing that all the time. Huh? So how free are we? How free are we? How free are you when you can't say what you need to say on your job for fear of reprisal? When you can't live out who you are because somebody's going to judge you because you're not a heterosexual person. How free are you when you speak your truth about what you are, how you are, who you choose to live, and why you want to love? Why should I be penalized for loving you? Who am I to judge? And why would we elect folk huh, to go into a room, and I'm going to put it out there, a bunch of white men with no womb telling me what I can do with mine. Now, how free am I if I choose to get pregnant, and I say choose, then I might decide me and him didn't work out and I want to do something else. Now, whether I believe that or not, it's nobody's business. But society has decided to force me to give birth to a baby that they ain't going to offer no health care for and ain't gonna feed, but gonna lock me up if I can't take care of it. Come on, Am I really free? Come on. Come on. Let's talk about not just, not offering health care. They ain't offering no child care for me to take care of it. Well, I wanna go out and try to work to better myself. And then I'm not making a living wage, so how dare I make a dollar above the SNAP benefit application. Then I lose my SNAP, lose my job, I lose housing. So how free are we in here you are? I mean, are you really free? And so I ask myself, ain't I free now? I ask myself that every day, am I really free? Now I know I'm, I'm free to love you. I'm free to communicate with you. I'm free to embrace you. I am free to associate with you. 
I am free to pray with you. I am free to cry with you. And I am free to rise with you. But are you really free? Are you free? Are you free to be treated, a demand that you be treated with dignity, with respect, with acceptance? Are you really free? Are you free to demand that you be accepted for nothing more than who you are? Are you free to walk around without a label that defines you as society decides you are? You see, my question to you today is how free are you? And as I pray every morning, I ask myself, ain't I free now? I mean, you know, one person, one vote. <laughs> but for the Electoral College. Right. So when are we going to be free enough to rise up above the bigotry that we don't call out, that we need to call out? How long are we going to tolerate a Congress and a Senate filled with bigotry. How long are we going to be enslaved to that kind of thing? How long? Don't complain if you ain't doing nothing about it. I can't do nothing but what I'm doing now, telling it like it is. And my mother said, and the truth shall make you free. I'm free because I live my truth. I'm not ashamed in hiding behind doors, thinking this and not being able to speak it. I don't care who don't like it. It's tough. Swallow it or spit it out. It's all right, it's on you. But if the truth is going to make you free, know it. Don't tell me you ain't your forefather. Yes, you are. If you're thinking it and doing it, you have not evolved. You're perpetrating slavery. And you're lying to yourself pretending that you care about me. No, you don't. I know it's getting a little deep. And some of y'all sitting there thinking, well, I ain't coming to church to hear nothing about politics where you could have stayed at home. <laughs> I would have to go there like, didn't nobody tell you about me? I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> you see, there was a time when the shackles were here. Amen. And the shackles were here. And the shackles were here. Now the shackles are here. Yeah. <laughs> so when are you? You, 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 and you. When are you going to take back your power? Huh? When are you going to allow your voice to raise up another man? When are you going to step up and empower somebody else? When are you going to say, ain't I? Free now. Thank you.
As we join together now for our tithes and our offerings, I'd like to reflect back on Reverend Sheena's message from last night. She reminded those of us that were present that each of us are enough. Folks, we are enough. How we worship, how we celebrate our God is enough. It's enough to sustain us. It's enough to bring light, love, and ministry to this church and this community. And enough to remind us and, your, and you of the abundance that we create. So on, be on behalf of all who served, who are served by this generosity that we create, I say thank you as the ushers come forward. One of my favorite pleasures is actually to do this part of service because it's a succession of prayers. And we pray for ourselves, we pray for each other, we pray for our works. And now I ask you, if you would, to place your attitude, your, your spirit, with an attitude of prayer. Loving God, thank you for these gifts that have been offered up to you. Not only the gifts that are before the altar right now, but also the gifts of time and talent the gifts of prayer. We ask that you would manifest these to better equip this church to meet your needs, that we offer that which you have asked us to do 
that we would offer faith, hope, but most of all, love. And it's in the name of that love I pray in Jesus I lift up. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> The next prayer. Loving God, bring us into our moment right now. Bring us in till we can reach in to ourselves and find pains and sorrows, physical restraints, emotional restraints, spiritual restraints, and allow you to touch them to empower them so that we can move out into the world, that we can offer our prayers now unto the world, that we could reach into other countries, that leadership in other countries might be touched by your love, by your wisdom, by your hope, that you could help others live free. We pray for leadership of other countries to see each other with much more compassionate eyes. We pray for your wisdom in politics, that your hand would start to be surrendered more, <clears throat> that your mercy and grace would be lived out unto the world that you have entrusted us to care for. We pray for those here in Los Angeles, our homeless population, that the people we pass on the street would, if nothing else, feel our presence that we would lift them up, and when we can, that we offer them what we can give, because they offer us so much. So God, please bring our resources, the resources you have given to us, the resource of hope and love in action, not just in prayer. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Communion is that time where we come together but for us to come together and offer ourselves to commune, we have to first offer to ourselves, commune with ourselves, be with ourselves. Because if we haven't loved ourselves, how can we love others as we've been asked to do? So I'm always remembered of Jesus sitting in the upper room with people that weren't his friends, they were his disciples. Friends typically cheer us on a lot. They don't whine about everything you ask to do. They don't have to poke you to trust you. So he had students with him. And students, he wasn't like up on a marker teaching, but students that he was modeling. He was modeling what it was to be a faithful person, a person who needed prayer, a person who needed love person who needed help, but a person who led. So he was with these whining students that didn't believe him but needed him to constantly be in their face. And he lifted up the bread and he said, remember this, because whenever you eat of this, I want you to remember me, not just as your teacher, but in the lessons that I've given to you. because he was equipping them. He was equipping them for the future so that they could lead. I don't think when he lifted up the cup, he meant remember me as the person. Remember my lessons. If you remember me, that's grace and mercy and one to celebrate. But remember my lessons as he lifted up the cup. He said, this is my blood which will be shed for you. Whenever you drink of this, remember me. Remember me that I've asked you to pray for me. So loving God, thank you for giving us these gifts. Mostly, thank you for giving us the lessons that allow us to appreciate the abundance you lay out to us. That our attachment to you, our attachment to love and grace and hope and joy would far outweigh our sorrows, our pains, our burdens, our hurts, that we can look to you when we are suffering, when we are hurting, that you can plant your compassion with us, allow us in, to be together, to commune, 
So as you transform these gifts to what each individual person needs, we thank you. In all your many names, in all your many houses, in all the hearts throughout the world, the name in this house we celebrate in Jesus' name. Amen. So for y'all that are new, one of the really cool things about Metropolitan Community Church is this isn't really our table. This is God's table. God's table doesn't have big rules. So whatever your belief is, it's all right. Whatever your hopes and dreams, whatever your hardships are, they're okay to bring to this table because it's not ours. We are blessed and privileged to offer it to all people. As the ushers ask you to come forward, there will be a server who will serve you the, the gifts. They will offer you a short blessing, if you would like. If you don't want a short blessing, but you still want to do it on your own, privately, there will be a station over here. But we invite you to come forward exactly as you are, with all the joys and sadness, all the anger, all the celebration, all the good things that this day brings. So come forward at the instructions of the ushers. That's the only rule. Other than that, we celebrate you in God's peace.
you know God is here? <laughs> and God is here. And God is here. And we don't have to leave under those chains anymore. Dr. Joyce preached them out of us today, I think. <laughs> those chains are broken. Amen? Amen. Only if we allow them. Only if we allow them. And yet in this time of Pentecost, we know that that Spirit of God gives the power once again yes. to keep those chains broken forever and ever. Now would you join us in our closing song? Have you enjoyed having Dr. Joyce with us today? Woo! Well, you can all get a chance to visit with her, but we're going to rush her down the steps as soon as I start praying the benediction, or down the elevator. Downstairs, because we're having lunch. You came on a wonderful day. I'll stay up here and greet those folks that are here as you go down. Woo, can you turn me down just a little bit? Thank you. <laughs> Whistling back at me. Can hardly hear myself. Okay, so um, Azani, our Azania group here at the church is having lunch. They prepared a wonderful meal downstairs today, not in the courtyard today, 
downstairs in the fellowship area. There are tables and chairs and flowers and all sorts of things set up. There is a $10 suggested donation, but do not, if you don't have the money, don't let that be an issue. There will be plenty of food, and we'll have a good time of fun and fellowship together. And so we just want to um, have you come and stay and just have a good time. We've been having more and more times of eating together, and we've been having a blast. I'm going to just tell you, last time nobody wanted to leave, and I, I don't blame them. I didn't want to leave either. It was all so good. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to pray over our benediction and pray over the food, and then if you want to greet Dr. Joyce, uh, greet her downstairs in the, in the fellowship hall, would you? God, thank you for this time we've had together. Thank you for bringing us a word today that challenges us, that challenges all of us, no matter our skin color, no matter our sexual orientation, no matter our gender, no matter our differences, no matter our sameness. A challenge that we don't allow those old tapes to come back and keep us in chains anymore. Those chains that held us, that may have held our forebears, as Dr. Joyce said, may have held them physically, but we know really still hold people sometimes today, spiritually, emotionally, mentally. So we ask for your freedom today and help us to walk in that freedom that you have given us. Help us to go out and live victorious lives and know, God, that you are with us every step of the way. We thank you for bringing Dr. Joyce to us, and we ask that you keep your hand on her ministry, bring her back again soon, and God, continue to open the doors that need to be opened for her ministry as well as we send our love and support from here. And for that, we give you praise and glory. Amen. Amen. And shake hands and be friendly. Amen.